history shows that many a genius flowers late in life. At 50, Darwin wrote the monumental origin of species. At 85, Farwell Dilworthy tried to carve a canoe paddle with his bifocals on and thus invented the mustard spreader. At 67, Norton W. Aspenloop tripped over his groceries, got molasses all over the fruit, and the world is richer for the taffy apple. And at 79, West in Wistful Vista, the last day of the month is warm, sunny, and delightful. In fact, as the man said when the florist truck tipped over and buried his wife under three tons of petunias, May couldn't have ended prettier. <laughs> and here at number 79, discussing the balmy weather, are Fibber McGee and Bolly. Hi, George, a day like this makes me want to get outside and do things. Get out under the sun, under the blue skies, and let the soft breezes caress me. Heavenly days, listen to him. But I think you're right, dearie. You betcha. It's disgusting to stay indoors on a day like this. I agree, absolutely. What shall we do? I'll flip you a quarter to see who takes a nap in the hammock. <laughs> You know, if we were back in Peoria now, we'd be out on the river in a canoe. Out on... Hey! That's it, kiddo. You got it. That's the stuff. Let's go out to Dugan's Lake and get a canoe. Are you serious? I ain't Roebuck. <laughs> what do you say, Tootsie? I can paddle a canoe as good as I ever did. Well, you never were any Hiawatha with a paddle, sweetheart, but I'll go with you. Great, baby, great. I'll start getting the stuff ready right Wait away. Wait a minute now. What stuff? Oh, just the usual canoe stuff. You know, pillows and a blanket and sun tan oil and some grub and my old mandolin. I better get the... Come in. Oh, it's Milton from the drugstore, McGee. Come on in, Milton. Thanks, Miss McGee. Hi, Mr. McGee. Hello, Milt. Swell day, ain't it? I and Mrs. McGee are going to go out to Dugan's Lake and rent a canoe. Well, I don't want to delay you, Mr. McGee. All I came over for was to say goodbye anyway. I'm going away on a vacation tomorrow. Are you, Milt? Where are you going? I'm going to hitchhike out west and get a job on a dud ranch. No. Oh. <laughs> You're a little mixed up, Milton. It's Dude Ranch. This one's a dud. It belongs to Uncle Lance that never made a nickel. You like hitchhiking, Milt? I tried it once and nobody picked me up. Strange for a man who was all thumbs to fail as a hitchhiker. Well, I got a gimmick, Mr. McGee. Yeah? Two years ago, it got me from Buffalo to Omaha in two days. Heavenly days. How'd you do that? I get an empty five-gallon gasoline can, paint it red, cut a door in the side of it, and pack all my luggage inside. Everybody stops for a guy that's carrying a can of gas. Oh. oh, my gosh, that's a wonderful idea, Milt. Don't anybody ever get sore when they find out you've tricked them? Oh, only once. The guy that took me to Omaha so quick was the assistant district attorney. Yeah. I spent five days in the sneezer for vagrancy. <laughs> Send you a postcard. Goodbye now. So long, Mel. Goodbye, Mel. Nice boy, Milton. Yeah, good kid. <laughs> A little irresponsible, but my gosh, you've got to reach my age practically before you have real good common sense. Oh, dear. Hey, bring a bed sheet and a clothes pole, kiddo, and I'll rig up a sail on that canoe. You won't do, have to... Captain Bly, and you'll sail alone. <laughs> you think I don't know how to sail a boat? My gosh, I read a book once that told all about how to sail a boat and all... Come in. Well, 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 look who's here. Dr. Gamble. The beloved old physician in Sturgeon. <laughs> who's devoting his life to cheering the healthy, healing the sick, and overcharging everybody. <laughs> Hi, a blood count. Hello, doctor. Hello, Molly. And good day to you, too, blabbermouth. I hope I'm not intruding. We're going out canoeing, Doctor. It's such a lovely day. Yeah. You mean, my dear, you are entrusting yourself in a flimsy little canoe with this ham-handed, overweight oaf? <laughs> Look who's cracking about being ham-handed. Who tipped over the rowboat last time we went fishing? I ain't mentioning any names, but I could lift my foot and kick the medicine bag right out of his greedy little hand. McGee, 
now, I don't think... Now, wait a minute, Flapjaw. I'll admit I happened to be rowing the boat at the time, but I didn't expect you to give a yell and jump up on my shoulders. <laughs> Could I help it if I sat on my fish hook? You cold-hearted, unsympathetic butcher's apprentice, you... <laughs> Yes, yes, you could help it. Yeah? You could buy an 85-cent tackle box to keep your hooks in. Oh. Hey, incidentally, you still owe me for that $40 rod and reel I lost that day. $40 rod and reel? Yeah. Ah! You mean that second-hand umbrella handle with the wooden spool fastened on it with a piece of... <laughs> Doctor, I could catch more fish with a long strand of macaroni tied to a bed slat and baited with two ounces of lint. <laughs> Now, 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 boys, that's enough. Stop it. He makes me tired. I make him tired. I get so weary talking to you, loud face, that I've got bags under my chin. Three of them. Count them. I can see them. Well, by the way, Molly, speaking of bags, I'm going away tomorrow. Vacation in the mountain. Oh, really? Well, I hope you have a wonderful time, Doctor. Yeah, you don't like the seashore, Ducky? Nope, not since I was mistaken for a battleship last year. <laughs> well, that's a fairly natural error, boy, but how'd it happen? Well, I was just coming out of the water after a swim. Yeah. Dripping wet. I grabbed up my towel and started away, and somebody said, going in to dry dock... <laughs> This year, I go to the mountains. So long, both of you. So long, guys. Let me read this list to you and see if I forgot anything that we'll need in the canoe, Molly. List? Yeah. Pillows and a blanket, suntan oil, portable radio, my fishing tackle, first aid kit and some grub, some cold root beer in case it gets hot, hot coffee in case it gets cold. <laughs> And my old man, Lynn. I better get that man, Lynn, right out of the hall closet right now. Hold it, dearie. Company. Come in. Oh, it's Ollie from the Elks Club. Hello, Ollie. Hello, missus. Hello, McGee. Hi, Ollie. What's new at the Elks, boy? Well, since you tore another hole in it, the pool table cover, McGee. Yeah? We got a new one today. Oh, good. I'll drop in and try it this week, Ollie. I, I wish you would, McGee. I, I wish you'd come play every day. Well, thanks. I'll try to do that. Because I won't be there. I'm going on vacation. I'll bet you're ready for it, too, Ollie. Uh, when do you start? As soon as the children get out of school? Yeah, pretty soon, nurses. Christina's already through with high school now. She finished. Sunday she commences. <laughs> Commences what? Commences working? In high school, McGee, you don't commence nothing. Hmm? When you finish, you, you, you use commence. <laughs> Sunday, they have commenced me. Oh, I know. He means they have their commencement exercises, McGee. That's it, Mrs. Only my Christina. She don't need no exercises. <laughs> she get muscles like a horse. <laughs> What's she going to be, a lady wrestler? No, Christina wants to be used to housewife. Huh? I tell her if she wants to be a housewife, she should study like a mother, domestic silence. You mean domestic science? I mean, if Christina learned to keep her mouth shut, she makes a fine wife, McGee. I go now, my missus wants some oranges from the market. I'll bet your children eat a lot of oranges, too, Ollie. They're mighty good for them, too. Oh, sure. We find oranges is very useful, Mrs. Useful, eh? Yeah, the last ones he got was used shop full of use. <laughs> very useful food. Well, I hope you have a nice vacation, Ollie. Yeah, and hey, if I want to get in touch with you this summer, where will you be, Ollie? Well, I tell you, McGee, in my backyard is a hammock. Mm -hmm. There's a newspaper in it. Yeah. If you lift up the newspaper, underneath is Ole. <laughs> Flat on my back in the hammock all summer and used to do in my time. Well, Ole sounds 
sounds like he's going to loaf all summer, dearie. Well, he knows how, all right. He loafs all winter. But... Well, I better think up some more stuff to take on our canoe ride. Maybe I ought to... See, I know one thing we don't want to forget, dearie. A bottle of citronella. Oh, no, none of that stuff. I took a bottle of that stuff last year, and I couldn't drink half of it. What? Anybody that takes citronella on... Hello, Molly. Hi. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Come in. Hi, Junior. Hey, you want to bring your wife and go canoeing with us tonight at Dugan's Lake? I'm taking my mandolin. Uh, sorry, pal, but I couldn't make it even if you weren't. <laughs> I'm uh, getting ready to take my vacation tomorrow. My, my, everybody's vacation. Yeah, where are you going to spend your vacation, Junior? In the beauty spot of the nation, pal. Racine, Wisconsin. Mm. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> well, now, if you boys will excuse me, I'll spend the next five minutes sorting the laundry. I can guess the rest of this. <laughs> Have a nice vacation, Mr. Wilcox. We'll miss you. Thank you, Molly. See you in the fall. Yeah, go ahead, kiddo. I started this, so I'll battle it through alone. I'll be the pigeon that... Saved by the bell. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, Kitty. <laughs> Come in, sis. I'm glad to see you. You are? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> oh, boy. Hi. Hello, Timmy. <laughs> I haven't seen you for a long time. Sit down, sis. What's new with you? My dollhouse. Huh? I got a new dollhouse, and old boys are ever pretty, though. A new dollhouse, <laughs> eh? Well, I suppose you know how to keep that dollhouse looking new, don't you, Timmy? Sure I do, I betcha. My mama told me how. Well, good for her. She did, eh? Yes, yeah, she... Hmm? He said she did, eh? Who did? Your mother, Teeny. Did what? Told you how. How what? How to keep it new looking. My dollhouse, I know it. <laughs> she, she says there's only one way to keep it new looking. Don't play with it. Oh, well, uh, Teeny, I was going to suggest that you try... You know something? My mom always uses Johnson's paste wax on her floors and furniture and woodwork. And you know, I was just wondering if I could use it on my dollhouse. Oh, my gosh. He's even got kids doing it. Teeny, of course you can. On a big house or a little house. Johnson's paste wax is the finest. You know, my mama says it not only imparts a mellow, gleaming luster to her furniture and woodwork, but it also protects and preserves it against dirt and dust and stuff I spill all over it. <laughs> What's the deal here between you? What day? That's absolutely right. Your mother knows that a Johnson waxed home is a well kept home. She knows that Johnson's paste wax is the finest investment in beauty for a home. Hey, it's hey, hey. It is. Look, look, waxy. Yes, pal. And you got to go now because I got to get ready to go canoeing. Oh, My wife and I... yes, yes, we do, Mister McGee. Oh. Come, Mister Waxy. If you if you're going down to Creamer Drugstore, I'll go with you and. One of us can buy the other one a soda, huh? That's a good idea, Teeny. Here, take my arm, miss. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Jackpot. <laughs> if Bully Toops asks about me, Mr. McGee, tell him I have a prior engagement. Goodbye, now. So long, sis. I'll see you this fall, Junior. Yeah, happy canoeing, pal. So long. <laughs> She's a cute kid, even if she does act like... Hey, hey, Molly. Yes, dearie? Let's be ready to leave here about sundown, huh? That way we can be on the lake in time to watch the moon come up, and I can play Harvest Moon on my mandolin. Well, you know and... something I've been wondering, dearie? Hmm? If you play the mandolin, who's going to paddle a canoe? Oh, don't worry. You won't get stuck with the paddling this time. Good. We can take turns. <laughs> I get my mandolin out of the hall closet right now and tune it up before we go. Just a minute, McGee. Come in. Oh, hi, Latrivia. Come in, boy. Oh, it's his honor, the mayor. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Molly. Hello, McGee. I just dropped in to tell you two I'm taking a little vacation. I'm leaving tomorrow. Yeah, how come, Latriv? The grand jury breathing down your neck again, boy? Now, McGee, I hope you have a nice rest, Mr. Mayor. Say, that's a lovely new sport coat you've got on. I particularly like the weed. Oh, this? Oh, thank you. 
I'm rather partial to this sort of material myself. It's nice. Anytime I go looking for a sport jacket, I always pick a herringbone. <laughs> you, uh, you walk into the store nibbling on it, do you, look at? I beg your pardon? I wouldn't think there'd be any nourishment in it myself. Nourishment? In what? A herringbone. My gosh, I like to pick a drumstick myself or a pork chop bone, but a herringbone... Uh, oh, no, no, wait. Let's not get into any... You know, the McGee can sit up all night and pick on a plate of spare rib bones, does he? Sure, you ought to try that, boy. I don't make a habit of gnawing bones in public, but if you hold a napkin in front of your face, you can get away with it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I meant nothing about eating, you understand. Hmm? When I said I like a herringbone, I meant... Here, see the way this material is woven. That's a herringbone weave. You mean they teach those itty-bitty fish to weave a spark? My gosh, what do they think of next? Do they swim in and out with a thread in their mouth, or do they stand on their tails and knit it with their fins? Neither none. I need a one. Nobody said they fit it with their nims. Fins? Look! Now, 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 Mr. Mayor. Don't shout. Calm down. Now, look, Latrib. This is your last visit here this summer. So tell me one thing, boy, and then let's forget the whole thing. Gladly. Do you like your herring bones kippered or plain? Because a kippered herring bone would be a pretty messy thing. I don't know. Clippered herring bones. What? Clippered herring bones. Herring bones. Oh, so I didn't say I ate the fish bone, the fish snake bone. No, when I said I kick a wearing very home, a very home, please, a very home, please, 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 please. That's it. I'll leave. Have a nice vacation, Molly. You too, McGee. Oh, thanks, boy. Now, here, just go out this door here, Lopez. Gladly. No, McGee, that's all. Sure is, kiddo. Just 
Just like the old days on the Illinois River back in Peoria, huh? Yes. Oh, this is really lovely. <sighs> well, there's been a lot of water under the canoe paddle since the Peoria days, huh, Snooky? Yes, but it's gone awfully fast, dearie. Yeah, sure has, baby. And you know what? There's something about riding in a canoe that kind of makes you think things over. I don't know what it is. Well, I do. In a canoe, you're close to the water. And when you're on the water, you're on the level. Yeah. What do you say we just drift for a while, huh, Snoopy? Wonderful. Great idea of mine, huh? Second greatest idea I ever had. The second? My greatest one was marrying you. Well, thank you. I'm glad I'm at the head of the list. I'd hate to play second fiddle to a canoe. <laughs> hey, speaking of second fiddles, I play first mandolin in this orchestra. Hand it here, will you? Sweetheart, on a lovely evening like this, I can't even whip up a protest on the mandolin playing. Here you are. Much obliged. Here, you take the paddle. Can you reach it? I think so. I... Oh! oh! I'm sorry, dearie. It slipped out of my hand. Can you reach it? <laughs> my gosh, kiddo. I can't even see it. It's getting too dark. Which side you drop it on? Oh, I don't even know that. Oh. oh, dear. What do we do now? Do what we always do when we lose the paddle on canoe trips. Paddle with the mandolin. <laughs> okay. But I sure hate to. Personally, dearie, I think you paddle with it better than you play it. You're not just saying that just because you believe it. Yes. Well, here we go. Cruising down the river, da 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 da